Hi, LawPod listeners. Tiara here, the girl behind the scenes. And I'm just popping in with a cold open to let you know that today's episode is actually part two of last week's conversation. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode yet, I'll invite you to go back, give it a listen, and we'll see you back here soon. Welcome to Accountants Law Pod, where accounting professionals and law firms converge. Hosted by Linda Artisani, Sarah Prevost, and Stephen Liphart. It's a cycle. You know what's interesting too is when you're um, the texting thing for banks and the voice over IP, it's so infuriating that we can't use. I understand there's reasons possibly why or why certain things won't work, but it is really frustrating, especially if you're traveling. And you're wanting to use a, like a secure way, like we have what Ring Central. You have all these other types of apps out there that people have been using, but you can't use it with certain banks, or you can't use it with this, or and it and you can't unlock the product, or you can't do something because you're prohibited from this. It is the most frustrating space to be in, and I imagine it just feels like. Like you just want to go back to the old days, like to Linda, your point, you just want to go back to the old way of doing it. Just whatever that is. <laughs> you gotta make it easy. I think a lot of that might have to do with the, um, with text messaging. There's the short codes. You yeah. Short codes for multi-factor authentication, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. To a uh, 10 digit, what they call it 10 DLC. Um, 10 okay. Digit, you know, local yeah. number. And so that's why we offer 10 DLC numbers. That way, if you want to use us for 2FA or whatever to improve security, yeah. That will happen because firms have a problem today, which is you. We we all know we have to have MFA on everything. It goes back to FTC guidelines. You have to have yes. multi-factor authentication. Everything. Well, how yes. do you run multi-factor authentication for a client's bank account that allows you to tether it to one phone number? <laughs> yeah. Phone number needs to be shared across the team. Yep. It's a frustrating it's a mess. Problem. <laughs> so people are leaving ten, so they're leaving MFA off. So we're about to release our feature, which is going to have. Line manager, you can give one line for the firm, all your MFA comes in there, right? And so the team can manage it. With, and you can be working in New York, Boston, and Santa Fe, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. You don't have to call each other saying, ah, this code's coming in. Who has that line? Or can traveling in Europe. <laughs> That's yes. right, traveling in Europe. There you go. You we have this game all the time. Every morning, because I'm on the East Coast, so a lot of times my phone number, and they're like, What's the phone number? What's the phone? Did you get the code? Where where did the code go? That's my first question. Where where am I finding this code? It's so frustrating. So this is, that's a huge, that, that's number one. That's I think huge. that's such a big, yeah. Yeah, a big, big, big problem we all face. So that'd be great to have that. They're all barriers to FTC compliance. They're all yep. barriers to yeah. 557 compliance. When when people put out these rules, you have to do these things. There are practical issues which have stopped the profession from being able to move forward. Mm-hmm. Chris, you can try to hack things together, which is stick it all on Linda's phone, and we'll all call Linda. <laughs> yeah. It ignores no. the human <laughs> so Anyway, that's but that's where I think that's that's the vision for the future. Is you know this stuff is coming together. If, you know we are where we are now with the government. The government's right, right? Yeah. I think as a profession, we have to work together to say, okay, what problems do we have, and what's a smart mm-hmm. way to handle them. And, you know, tech's never done. We could come out there and say, there is a better way. Here's a proposal. Um, I think we all have opinions on it. Um, but I think it's certainly the future um, is here now, which is, you know, get texting, get email, get secure messaging, get it all, start to get it all together. So mm-hmm. you can actually start to move a little bit more quickly. And, secure and there's so mm-hmm. many bad guys out there and you read about it constantly about all these hacks and things that are happening. And it's, you almost become numb to them because there's so many of different, oh, what happened there? What happened at that? You know, I, I get things from like even the credit card agencies that will say, what well, we, you know, your data breach and your, your whatever password. And you just have to stay on top of those things. I mean, it's just part of business and it is a pain in the neck. I think I saw a post the other day on Facebook and somebody said, the hack, dear hackers, I know you have all my passwords. Can you help me out? <laughs> because it's kind of, that's how it feels sometimes. There's so many different passwords. <laughs> so, so one of our, one of our, one of our board members um, is, he runs operations for Bank of America and Merrill Lynch. So okay. tens of thousands of employees and that kind of thing in his group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, there's some insight here. This is, there's publicly available data on Statista, for example, about this. But Bank of America can't announce their mobile app in 2008. Okay, wow. so it's been 15 full years. Wow, we've been doing mobile banking, right? 15 years. Okay, so at the time, Bank of America and their, and their team 
employees were about 280,000, okay? By 2012, Bank of America's app started to get real traction. And so again, you can go look at statistics on this, it's all public. Start to get real traction. What you see is a drawdown from 280,000 employees to 200,000 employees because the, we all started self-servicing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so the person who couldn't find other things in the Google email, how easy was it to find anything in that Google email account that was deleted? Not easy. Not easy. And, you know, I started out as, a, as an auditor. We, if a client didn't have a bank statement, what would we do? We'd call the bank. Can you resend us the bank statement? Yep. Maybe have to get paper copy back then, right? Mm-hmm. What was the last time we called or client had to call the bank to resend something? Never happens. No. Nope. Yeah, it's Never true. Happens. It becomes electronically available. Right. You wouldn't That's do right. that. Right? I mean, you think about it. Banking has changed quite a bit. I, I mean, just by the fact that it's in your phone and um, they're all a little bit different, which is kind of weird. But I mean, we're we're with Bank of America. The big, the big banks are all pretty modern. They have all the, the little... Uh, perks to it and it, the better software and everything, but it has changed a lot. I mean, I don't want to go to the bank if I don't have to, but I have a husband who would go to the bank in a heartbeat. Like he likes to sit there and tell his life story to the lady. I'm like, well, you've gone a long time, but <laughs> well, yeah, there's candy he's, there. There's candy. And all this candy. It's you're right. Candy Sarah, sorry, the candy. The... <laughs> I'm like, hold on a minute. I know why. Not just the social hour, the candy, but there's like, candy there. <laughs> you don't need to go to the bank, but yeah, he uses the he just likes to go to the bank. So and, and and there's less banks. So now Florida had banks all over the place, right? A lot of old people, and they're taking the banks away. So we're very few. Like even Bank of America used to be at the end of my street, and now there's one at, at the mall, but there's none around because they've taken the physical branches away. So yeah. which is which is good, right? Because the humans were there as your husband goes. Mm-hmm. He's going to go talk to a relationship manager. It's not a transaction anymore. Yes. It doesn't have to be a transaction. It's a relationship, which is what the accounting profession should be focused on. We should be focused on nurturing relationships, not doing the transactional stuff. Yeah. But I think if we go back to the social security thing, right? If we say, look, did Bank of America and Chase and all these firms invest that much in their tech because they wanted to make things secure more or they mm-hmm. wanted clients to self-serve more? It was probably born out from the need that they had to get away from email for security reasons. Yeah. They had to. And what they they had this knock-on effect, which is when we fixed the security problem, we actually made customers happier. And when we made customers happier and more successful, we actually had to do a lot less work ourselves. Yeah. We went from 280,000 oh. employees trying to service people transactionally to uh-huh. 200,000. That's that's huge. That's huge. The same I mean, thing is going to happen to accounting. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I I have a question though, because this this t- talking about banks and just in general, I was a little caught off guard with oh, just send in, just email me your tax returns <laughs> for this loan. I'm, I'm sorry, you're the bank. You you just she had you to just happen. want me to email you. I was floored. I was first. I was upset. Because I have a long-standing relationship, right? Second yeah. of all, I'm like, you, you got to be kidding me. Oh, no, it'll be, it's encrypted when it, it comes through to us. Like, okay, I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but so that goes back to my initial question, which I think you were going to try and answer a little bit, was we can't control what's being sent to us, whether we request it or not, right? Like we request it in the right way. They mm-hmm. don't want to send it that way. They're just going to send it via email. So now what? What that that's when it comes that, to the like, FTC. Yeah, what happens there? Like that's not in our yeah. control. What it, what it happens? So so there's a couple things here. Number one, most people want to retain the email as a source record, right? Yeah. So okay, this email comes in, I got to retain it. The second you say my email accounts and my team's email accounts are going to be source document repositories, because what happens if your employer receives something? And then you know downloads the attachment, but then deletes it. What mm-hmm. happens? You lose all the record. Don't want to do that. So what's happening is everybody's going after our email accounts because they're so target rich. Mm. Okay. So what we do at Lysio is <laughs> the client email exists in Lysio. So we have John Doe at acme.com. We know that's a client. If John Doe sends an email in, we recognize it came from John Doe, we automatically pull it from Outlook or Gmail and associate with John Doe on our system. Okay. Okay. So now what, so what happens then is when that association is made, you can see it in Lysio, 
and you can delete that email from your email account. So if your email account is compromised, there's nothing there. Mm. Okay. It's all behind the 2FA Lysio account. Okay. Because it's going to happen. And it's um, going to remain in the Lysio, but it, it's off right. that server. It, it's off that. Yeah. That's right. Because the same thing is going to happen. You're going to have things that are you're going to be working with an attorney. The attorney mm-hmm. might send you something related to a client that has extraordinarily sensitive information. It comes over email. You can't control that. But again, what will happen is even though that Lysio um, contact might not exist for that attorney, you say, mm-hmm. okay. This is for John and Jane Doe. It's related mm-hmm. to Acme. It comes from the attorney, but it's coming from some attorney that has, you know, affects multiple clients. You'll go into list, you'll, you'll attach that email to Jane and John Doe and Acme. You just, you just pick okay. it, it's related to them, then you delete it out of your email. So okay. now everybody can see the entire history in one place and your email stays secure. Nice. So then you're at that point, the responsibility of what you've done on your side of the firm, because you cannot control the actions. It, it, now you've owned that space a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Right. If, your email, if your email, for whatever reason, gets breached, you're like, not a problem. Because what's in the email is unencrypted. What's in email is probably, the, obviously, the biggest entry point for bad people, mm-hmm. those bad actors, right? So you're saying, good luck. Because here's the deal. People who have been breached, had their email breached, and there's been more than a couple of firms that's had this happen to, you know, whether it's a whole firm or some of their employees, Mm-hmm. The first thing they do when they come out of the process is they say, no more PII and email. We are going to make sure our emails are fully deleted. They'll wipe their entire email account, right? Every every couple of days just to stay wow. in compliance, right? Because you can't have this treasure trove of stuff out there. Wow. Same thing with the personal phones, with texting, et cetera, right? You can talk to any firm in America, you know, from the largest to the smallest, and if they have employees who are texting, none of them have a solution when that employee leaves the company. No, yeah, that's, that's the problem. I mean, it's crazy. It's and, you know, the same thing with email. You gotta get it, get the PII in. If PII comes an email, it's fine. Match it to the right account in Lysio so everybody can see it. You don't mm-hmm. have to worry about CCing mm-hmm. and BCCing and forwarding so much anymore. Mm-hmm. Put it in there. That's your repository. Now it's transparent and clear. Delete it from your email. So, is clear. Okay. Just curious because I feel like people feel they're fail saving on this alone. Well, they've made it encrypted or secured with the password. They they send this email in this like layer of this, or they use an app to to cover that. Like it's not a right. portal. Right. So you, you could do that. You open it up, but sometimes that's where the spoofing happens. That's where the that, that's where the issues lie. Right. Like it's the same. <laughs> It's hard to navigate through that. You got to be smart. You got to go train your people like crazy. You got to be smart. Yeah. I think the biggest issue with that is like, usually it's one way. Usually the accountant who's responsible will one way private key encrypt out. Not many clients have the wherewithal or the tooling to encrypt private key sending back. Yes. And so what value is one way security? That's That's, I think where I'm going with this is like the value of that is, a circumstantial one quick moment, but it's not allowing the same to come back in. That's right. If we're going to do it out, which is going to require them to enter a key to Mm -hmm. encrypt it, why not just say, let's work like Bank of America where you can face ID in (laughs) and the face ID works for everything we do. Yeah. So just that particular file. We've had that happen with tax people that want something from us and it's like, Oh my God, this stupid portal. I can't get into it. And then the client doesn't know how to get into it. And it's and like, they're like, gave it to you to do to, to upload it for them. And I'm like, this is terrible. I mean, so we just use our software and like, here you go. Here's your stuff because I can't be bothered. I can't remember already portal or get the codes in the lockdown emails. I guess it's Microsoft does this one thing that's like, I can't, it's very annoying. You can log in with Google. I'm like, I get way too many clicks. I don't have time to be doing all that click. <laughs> yeah, because we're going we're gonna to put this, this many clicks for how many different software? Right? Yeah. Right. We send a link through DocuSign, and then we send, should that should that be MFA? Probably should. Probably should. We send something for payments. A link goes out from QuickBooks to pay. Highly spoofable. We send something encrypted email through Microsoft. Oh, true. There's so many different ways. The client would be yeah. like, look, I can't MFA my way through all this stuff. That's This is getting pretty crazy. It is. If I ever want to find anything later, I have no idea where to start. Yeah, yeah. And, and 
it's, and there's this big conversation about client portals in general, right? Do you use them? Do you not use them? How do you do it? Do you, where do you communicate? I, I honestly feel like the way I've felt strongly is we've invested in a product that protects both of us. And that's what we do. That's, that's how we start our process. Um, but I feel the fatigue. I feel the fatigue and just passwords alone and trying to remember somebody who asked me on my staff, Hey, was that you that signed up for that, Sarah? How do I log into that? Oh my God. I mean, I've got 800 passwords right now. I got to sift through all of them, right? And if they're coded right, that's the other thing with the password protection stuff. You got to sift through to figure out what labeling did you do for that client way back when? And it's part of business now. It's just part of doing business. business. We have to do That's why we have practice protect. So we have that layer of security. So we have all these things in place to protect you know, I don't want any passwords getting taken by somebody or a staff member leaving, taking up. You just can't. So we have to have the lockdown systems. Yeah, the practice effect is perfectly on the right track because if you think yeah. about it, you have the single, you have the single system for guarding all of really everything you're using, right? I think yeah. we take that same paradigm, whether it's Bank of America, it's a single system, it's a single portal to do check yeah. deposit, get your statements, check your balances. Uh, anything you need to do, get your tax forms. It's all there in a single place. I think the future of accounting is clearly single portal. We know we can't use email. Email was never a great solution anyway. Can't send huge documents, can't get things signed. The links are vulnerable, all that kind of thing. So I think yeah. take a look at that saying email could never be just inherently can never be a single portal. People don't want to use it anyway. So we end up on text. That's even worse. So we have to, I think in 2024, everybody's going to say, look, Single portal is going to be the theme. A lot of firms are moving in 23 towards single portal. Mm-hmm, Before, mm-hmm. I think there's just, that's it. The tidal wave of, I'm done with this many logins. My clients get one place. I get mm-hmm. one place with clients. Mm-hmm. And then we have a bunch of back office systems that work with that. Yeah, yeah. That's smart. I, I, I've i heard it this year alone. I've, I'm hearing it, obviously, to your point. And I am excited for this change because I feel like we're also on the fatigue. We're also squirrely. We all squirrel and shiny object, but yet it's just nice to simplify. And we see it in the complaint section of our own clientele. So, yeah. This is a good topic. I'm glad you came. Cool. Oh my gosh. Great, great being here. Super fun. So I know we'll continue the conversation about single portal probably next time. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the next reality. Yeah. But I think. Uh, yeah. Hopeful people really are saying, hey, look, the security thing is it shouldn't be scary, right? Because Bank of America made it better, right? I think there's this gigantic win mm-hmm. uh, for clients and for firms alike by saying, look, we're gonna let's turn let's turn the security thing into a positive, right? It's nothing scary. We only have to go there. And when we go there, let's do it the right way. So everybody wins. FTC feels great, you know, cyber insurance claims are gonna go. We don't want to have those anyway, but cyber from cyber yeah. security, great. <laughs> client feels better off we feel better off so i think there's a lot of wins to be had there definitely well thank you so much for your time on this i i know we'll definitely obviously we're personal friends so we're gonna have you back no matter what <laughs> sure more yeah, updates you. with uh, your products so with your product with software so we were really excited about what's coming down the pipeline and um mm-hmm. we love any software that keeps growing and we know that's what you all do over there so Oh, plus, you get such great people behind your products. So, yes, great, Linda, appreciate that. You'll be the first to know. We'll break a story here. Sure. Yes. How about that? That'd be awesome. Okay. That would be awesome. Special note. Tira, I know you're in the background making note. Okay. <laughs> so, um, if you've enjoyed this today or you have suggestions for us, please like and subscribe to the podcast on our YouTube channel, on the Accounts Law Pod website. There will be show notes as well. You can also email us at info at Accountants Law Pod. Dot com where our lovely Tiara in the background will monitor that for new topics, suggestions, continuations. If we have continuations, I mean, we could do this on, on social medias, but uh, uh, ways of comments and stuff, but we could also um, obviously have Chris back and do a deeper dive on different things. If you'd like to join us in the Accountants Law Lab, which we had an amazing conversation this morning, <laughs> um, it is www.accountantslawlab to sign up. Also, Steve isn't here, who's our counterpart. We forgot to say that. I so know. Steve's not here because he's traveling. He is um, traveling. He's going to be in Kansas, in the state of Kansas. I think in Kansas. Kansas somewhere. City, I think. Yeah. Can't, 
yeah, or a small little town. And so he's on an adventure. So maybe we'll put like a little, uh, maybe some photo links or something that he's done. Cause he is the one person in our group. That's the traveling fool we for love like him. five amazing. months. We yeah. love him to pieces. Yeah. Um, so, and there'll be stuff about him on Instagram, probably some photos and such. Yeah. So, but anyways, thank you so much for today, Chris. It's really nice to finally connect and have at least a Friday uh, hang out with you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. To be continued. Yes, definitely. Yes. Awesome. For sure. Bye, everybody. Right, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.